Contact Lens, a Vision Killer or a Fashion Accessory by Dr. D.P. Prakash. Dr. D.P. Prakash, he completed his uh, uh, MBBS from Stanley from 1990. He did his diploma in ophthalmology from the famous Arvind Ike Hospital, diplomate of National Board of Ophthalmology in 1994, FRCS Ophthalmology from Glasgow in 2000, he is also um, from the International Council of Ophthalmology, Cambridge, 2000. He also is a recipient of the Ratan Tata Fellowship in Peko Emulsification from Shankar Netralaya. He is presently the Chief ophthalmo Ophthalmic Surgeon in American Eye Care Center. He's got many publications and to his credit, and he is also is a recipient of many awards. Over to you, sir. I'm sorry. Can I, am I audible now? Can I share yes, my screen? Sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, yes you're sir. audible. Please audible. go ahead. Yeah. Share Thank you, Dr. Screen. Priya. Thank you so much. Just a minute. Yeah. That's sure. your Zoom screen. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, a very, very interesting uh, case. And through this case, I would just want to uh, highlight a very important message to all of you. I know I'm the last speaker, so I'm the last batsman of this long innings. So you must all be really uh, eager to finish this. So I won't take much of your time and it will be just a 10 or 15 minute presentation. So uh, we have a, a patient who just came last month. She was a 50-year-old lady. She was a poorly controlled diabetic. And uh, the complaint that she said was she had pain on waking up in the right eye. And she also had watering and photophobia. She used to have similar episodes like this before. And uh, we have diagnosed this patient as a case of a recurrent corneal erosion which is nothing but the corneal epithelium just gets uh, detached from the underlying stroma. And whenever the patient blinks, the upper lid touches the uh, epithelial defect region in the cornea and the patient will exp experience excruciating pain whenever the patient blinks. So the best treatment for this condition is usually, we usually put a bandage contact lens. Bandage contact lens is nothing but a zero powered contact lens. It does not have any power. So we put the lens and we allow the epithelium to heal underneath the contact lens. And the moment we put the contact lens, the patient will stop experiencing pain. And usually we can remove the lens in a few days, usually five to seven days. This is what we generally do. So we prescribed a bandage contact lens for this patient and the contact lens was opened by me personally and I fit the lens personally. And I made sure that the lens was perfectly valid as regard to the expiry date. And this is a company which I've been using for quite some time. I have fit this lens for many people from, for a long time. Instantly the patient was happy and the patient's pain was relieved in my clinic itself. The patient went home. Now, 24 hours later, the next day morning, the patient calls me up with severe unbearable pain in the eye in which the contact lens was put. So I was asking myself, what's happening? Initially, I thought that the contact lens must have fallen off. And that is the reason why this patient is having pain again. So I said, I asked the patient to come immediately to my practice. Actually, this patient is, uh, son is a, medical student, actually a, a doctor who just finished, and he's the classmate of my son also. So she's a VIP patient for me. When I saw this patient, 
at my clinic exactly 24 hours after fitting the contact lens to the patient. The vision in that patient had dropped to just two meters. She could barely see just what are things which are there two meters in front of her. And she was having severe pain also. And the contact lens was still there in the eye. So what I did, we removed the contact lens and we examined the patient on the slit lamp. Now, what I'm going to show you is the photograph of the patient's slit lamp findings. Aha, that photograph is missing. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, give me just a minute. I'm just going to go back to that uh, photograph because that photograph has not updated here. I'll just show you the can photograph you, of this patient. Yeah, get the photograph separately so that we can see yeah. it. Seems yeah, interesting. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> just a minute. Mm. I wouldn't want to miss it. Yeah. There should come there. Albums. This is bad. Mm. Do you want to go off screen and search for it? Because we are also enjoying your. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Just, just give me a second so that I'll just. Yeah, just sure. give me one minute. I'll just stop share and then yeah, I'll yeah. come back. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go, yeah. go ahead. No problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I got this. So I just have to go up and uh, from here I have to go. Okay. You can got screen it. share the photo separately and then go back to your presentation. Yeah. Now I have to come back to Zoom and start the screen share, right? Yes, you have to screen share. Yeah, yeah. Share content. And on screen share, you'll have to choose your photograph. Photos, yeah, I'll choose photographs. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't entered screen sharing yet. What is it? Okay. Okay. Yes, screen sharing is yeah, on. Yeah, I'm, I'm screen sharing is on. Yeah, now I you got the photographs. photographs. Yeah, yeah, I got the photograph. Can you see this photograph which I'm seeing now? Yes. Yeah. So this is the most dreaded photograph for any ophthalmologist uh, anywhere in the world. This is the photograph that we saw uh, on the 24 hours after putting that contact lens. And if you can see in this picture, this patient is having a white color U-shaped structure on the cornea. That white color U-shaped thing is known as a corneal ulcer. And the white color lines that you see from that C-shaped structure is all corneal stromal edema. We call it striate keratitis. But the most dangerous and the most significant part of this photograph is what lies at the six o'clock position of the cornea you can see some yellowish pus in the uh, with a layer on. I mean, can you see that? Can you? Yes, that's appreciated. 
yeah at the bottom 6 o'clock the, position uh, uh, yeah that is known as a hypopion so that is the most dangerous thing this indicates that the person is having pus inside the eye so the, what you see out the 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 whitish color thing c shaped structure is a corneal ulcer and the pus is actually behind it in the anterior chamber so i will show you some other pictures which i have took of this patient this is another picture of the same eye and you can see that this is a very 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 severe corneal ulceration and now i will go back to my uh, presentation okay i'm sorry yeah so what we have now suspected is we suspect a severe bacterial corneal ulceration which is most probably due to a contaminated contact lens or a contact lens solution there there is usually the contact lens comes in a pouch and there is a solution inside the pouch which is manufactured by the manufacturer and we started topical moxifloxacin one hourly for this patient and we also included natamycin which is uh, antifungal pimarifusion we started that two hourly and we also give this patient homotropin eye drops and when a case like this comes we we ask the patient to come every 24 hours so that we can examine the patient after 24 hours so the next day also the patient came with the same clinical picture with no changes this patient had a corneal ulcer with a hypopion which is the most dangerous thing and if the ulcer is more than 3 mm this ulcer was around 7 mm 5 mm in size so this is a quite a dangerous thing and we inform the patient this is quite a dangerous thing and the patient might require a corneal grafting that is we need to remove the infected cornea and put a a new cornea which is donated by somebody who has died so we explain to the patient that this is not a very small thing and it's going to be a very 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 uh, dicey thing because we are suspecting now a pseudomonas infection pseudomonas is one thing which we are all scared of and this is dreaded by every ophthalmologist in this world so the patient came to us with a very simple recurrent corneal erosion and now what we have in our hands is a vip patient with a pseudomonas corneal ulcer the patient came to us with a vision of 6 by 12 today the vision has dropped to 2 by 60 which is 2 meters so which is a real 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 catastrophe for the patient now what did we do for this patient there is the best drug for pseudomonas as far as ophthalmology corneal ulcers are concerned is known as amikacin i am sure you all know about amikacin injections unfortunately we do not have a good concentration of amikacin eye drops so far in our country we have only one company which is manufacturing amikacin eye drops but that is at a very low concentration it is known as aminogen that is not going to work for pseudomonas corneal ulcers so what we did we bought four vials of injection amikacin and each vial contained 100 mg so we put 50 mg per ml into a 10 ml tear substitute bottle we took out 8 ml and we injected this 8 ml of amikacin into the tear, tear substitute and we asked the patient to start this amikacin eye drops which has been formulated by us and we gave it to the patient asking the patient to use every hourly alternating with the same moxifloxacin now we will go for the next day this is the picture that we took on 5421 the previous picture was taken on 34 then she came on 44 now she comes on 54 can you make out that that pus in the eye has disappeared can can you all see that sir can you hear me yes 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 please go ahead yeah i have muted yeah. everybody please go ahead oh okay right so in this picture it is very beautifully seen that whatever pus was there inside the eye the, the thing which we call a hypopion is completely gone yes, so this is a beautiful clinical evidence for us this is nothing but pseudomonas now we are dealing with a pseudomonas so what we did we immediately referred this patient to a tertiary referral center for a corneal scraping so that we can at least try to see if the pseudomonas is still there or not the corneal scraping was done a gram staining was done for this patient gram stain came as negative 
KOH for a fungus also stained, no organism. Culture and ba for bacteria and fungus were given, but eventually after 38, uh, 36 to 48 hours, they, they reported as, that also came out as negative. Now, this is the picture of this patient after a week. After a week, if you see the corneal ulcer, previously the corneal ulcer was kind of yellowish in color. Now you can see that the corneal ulcer the, has become slightly whitish in color. When it becomes whitish, it just means that the ulcer has started to heal and the patient's vision started to improve. The vision improved now to 6 by 18, which is very good improvement on such short notice. That, that photograph was taken on the uh, 12th of April. And now we reviewed the same patient. See, because of the lockdown, now I'm not going to my clinic. I am examining my patients sitting in my house. So this is a remote examination, which I'm doing for this patient. This was done on 25, 21. The patient's vision improved to six by nine. And if you see the corneal ulcer has completely healed, there is no activity because there is not much of redness in the eye. And there is one C-shaped uh, opacity in the cornea that is nothing but a scar now. It is a scar, it is not an ulcer now. An ophthalmologist can easily make out whether it is a scar or an ulcer. So the take home message from this, what I can tell you is that contact lenses are dangerous even with the medical supervision. We were lucky to get away with the pseudomonas corneal ulcer in this patient, but not every time ophthalmologists like me are lucky because pseudomonas sometimes is resistant to every drug that we have and it can just relentlessly destroy the cornea. And all this happened because the contact lens supposedly had a contamination inside it, even though it was a new lens. This lens was inserted by an ophthalmologist. Imagine the condition of patients who are using contact lens as a fashion accessory. They put the lens themselves. They oversleep with their lenses. They use the same solution. Sometimes they use tap water also. And in these kind of situations, the risk of bacterial corneal ulcer due to contact lenses is very, very, very high. We have seen many, many patients like this. So the take home message that I would like the audience to take home is that contact lenses are dangerous and they are, even though you may consider them as a fashion accessory, maybe your children are using it or maybe you are using it, but remember to get yourself checked from an ophthalmologist every three months at least. Just don't wait for a problem to come. Just go to an ophthalmologist. Make sure that you are using the lens in the proper manner. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. But then there are thousands of people or millions of people using contact lenses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll yes, stop sharing. Uh, so when there are millions of people using contact lenses, yes, uh, what would be the indication of, uh, I mean, what would be the incidence of people getting ulcers? It could be as high as 1% to 2%, sir. That's a lot. Yeah. But and, uh, th this doesn't happen say, immediately. As you say, I have, I have seen people take off the lenses, wash it in tap water, fill up some tap water, splash water on their faces. Yes. You know, try yeah. all sorts of things with it, see if there is a scratch in it, and then wear it. I've seen so many things, so many people doing stuff. We routinely see corneal ulcers due to contact lenses, sir. Routinely as ophthalmologists, I'm sure many ophthalmologists in this forum also will agree to this. It is one of the most dangerous things uh, which has been approved by all of us. Okay. Dr. Sivapriya says, superb presentation. Uh, there are a couple of doctors who say superb presentation. Is there a question, sir? There are no questions right now. Are there any questions from the audience? Audience can unmute and ask questions. Uh, yes, sir, I do have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm Dr. Sukumar. I incidentally happen to be Dr. D.P. Prakash classmate in school. Hello, Sukumar, how are you? Prakash. Yeah, fine, thank you. It was a very interesting presentation indeed. 
but I just have a, a basic question. This patient had a contact lens as a therapeutic option, right? Yes, exactly. And despite that, uh, she developed this complication. So how do you deal with patients who require uh, contact lenses as a therapeutic option? I'm now really and what scared. is the alternate they have for this condition? Yeah. Fantastic question, Sukumar. Very, very nice question as to alternate. See, previously, I never used to get scared of putting contact lenses for a recurrent corneal erosion. But nowadays, I am really, really scared to put a contact lens on a patient who really needs a contact lens. So what I am doing is, I'm washing the lens with moxifloxacin drops before I start putting the lens in, onto the patient's eyes. That is the only thing I can do right now. And the other option of uh, what, what can I do without a contact lens is that I can put a bandage for the patient. That is, I can close the eye and I can bandage the patient's eye. If I can do that, that will give me the same effect as a contact lens. But then I have to remove the bandage every 24 hours and change the bandage after 24 hours. That is an excellent option for a person who does not have a contact lens or for a doctor who does not want to fit a contact. I think I answered your query, uh, Sukumar. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank another you very query much. that I had, what happens next to the scar on the cornea? You showed that there was a scar. What is the refraction for this patient going to be? How is she going to perceive light or a textbook or a computer uh, a word or a document or what it is. Is it going to be the same? How long is it going to take to recover? What's going to happen? Or are you going to shave off a bit of the cornea like elastic? What are you going to do? <laughs> Tell me I want to. That's a very, very, very pertinent question because the patient asked me the same question whatever you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually what she's having is a scar. But this lady is a very, very lucky lady, I'm telling you, sir, because the scar was not on the center of the pupil. That scar was on the lower part, that is the uh, mid-periphery of the cornea. Fortunately, her vision was 6 by 12 when we last saw her, and it eventually improved to 6 by 9, which is 90% vision she has. Now, that scar will slowly fade away after six months slowly but it may not completely go away it will fade slowly but the astigmatism which is called as uh, irregular uh, due to irregular stretching of the cornea then she might be having some scattering of light whenever she's seeing a bright object but then that, that is something that the patient has to live with we are not going to touch this patient for the next six months even if she now rec de develops a recurrent corneal erosion on top of the ulcer I, I'm just going to put only a bandage for her, not a contact lens. So will you be giving her glasses now with spherical lens or cylindrical Sir, lens? Sir, she already, she's already using glasses, but then the refraction will keep changing every month for this patient as the scar gets remodeled. The stretch effect on the cornea will keep changing. So we will wait for a couple of months before we give the glasses to the patient. Okay, Dr. Sandeep would she, has asked... Would she get uh, the... Sorry, uh, would she get the same problem that she came to you for the first uh, time? Uh, she had that corneal erosion, right? When she yes, came sir. in first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What is the possibility for her to get the same condition again? Actually, she got the same condition again yesterday. Oh. oh she got the it... same condition yesterday. We diagnosed, I got really scared whether there was the corneal ulcer had. Uh, uh, record or whether the organism has come out and I immediately sent her to a tertiary center this time and I did the scraping once again and fortunately there they found that there was no organism on gram stain, gimsa stain as well as the KOH mount which proves that this was once again a recurrent corneal erosion that was happening. Sometimes corneal ulcers come with uh, virus also. Yes sir. There have been so, uh, reports about how that. How do you prevent this uh, recurrent uh, corneal erosion then in this case? The best treatment for recurrent corneal erosions is to prevent them from recurring. Usually the name itself shows that it's going to recur because there is a, actually the problem is a basement membrane problem. There is a poor attachment of the hemidesmosomes of the epithelium to the underlying stroma. That is the basic uh, cause in these patients. So what we do is we do something known as a needle micropuncture. We take a 26 gauge or a 30 gauge needle, we bend the tip of the needle and we puncture the cornea in the place where the erosion is there after debriding the epithelium. We keep puncturing. 
So we put around in, in, a, in a three millimeter space, we'll put around 50 punctures, micro punctures, which go up to the deep stroma. This is done in the out outpatient department. Once we do this deep punctures, somehow the epithelium which grows starts developing these hemidesmosomes, which are like feet, which go and anchor in the stroma. This is the best known treatment for recurrent corneal erosions at this point of time. Dr. Sandeep has asked how many layers were involved and what is the chance of rupture? Very good question, Dr. Sandeep. See, the cornea has got five layers. First is epithelium, next is base Bowman's membrane, then is the stroma, which is the thickest layer. Then you have a very, very tough membrane known as the decimates membrane, and behind it, you have a one single cell layer called as the endothelium. In this patient, the ulcer went up to the stroma, the deep stroma. But fortunately for us, we picked it up early before it could break through the decimates membrane. Had it break through the decimates membrane, we would have had a corneal perforation and that would have been the end of the eye. So if you didn't have a corneal perforation, how did you have the hypopion in the uh, anterior chamber? Fantastic question, sir. Beautiful question. Hypopion is actually now a sterile hypopion. Basically, this is the reaction of the anterior chamber to this ulcer, basically. This is not an infected hypopion where there is a pseudomonas inside the pus. This is basically neutrophils, macrophages coming out from the iris and filling. The inflammation is so severe in this case that it has caused pus in the anterior chamber. So it's sterile pus. It need not be drained. No, it, need, it went away by itself. Okay. Are there any more questions? No, there are no more questions. It was a very good presentation. We really enjoyed it. If you have more interesting cases, please do come up with it. You can even present it on the WhatsApp groups and we can go on and on discussing about this. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. Subramaniam, uh, this is something wonderful to have the team, our entire members staying up to four, four hours, more than four hours, right? It's and, very interesting. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's exactly so interesting four hours. that everybody stays. Everybody stayed, and uh, until the last moment, there is no let up on enthusiasm, asking questions, and engagement with Dr. Prakash. Although he is the last speaker, not the least speaker. Wonderful, excellent, great job done. Thank you, all members, for this great participation. Thank you so much. We will now draw the meeting to a close. There are no official announcements at the moment. So we will Thank continue you, to Prakash. chat on Thank you, sir. continue to chat on the WhatsApp groups. I am once again reminding you to put your attendance in the chat box marked to everyone. If you have done that, then you can leave one by one. I have some administrative work on this window, which will take me about five minutes. So then I will end the meeting for all. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you.